David Payne, who is now one of the voices of yesterday, and the uh, broadcast. David, thank you. Thank you. It's nice to, nice to be with you again. Thank you very much, David. David, um, what is uh, negative and positive about being famous? I think, you know, the, the positive part is is that you get a chance to do what you want to do, what you love to do, and if, especially if you're a baseball player playing in a Yankee Stadium. To me, that the positive far outweighs the negative so as far as baseball players go. And when I played, we didn't have a lot of paparazzi either, so they kind of <laughs> left us alone. You know, nowadays, I guess, in, in other industries, if you're talking about actors and actresses and political people, you know, that's a little tougher than, than the way I had it. I, mean, I, had, I really had no complaints. You play for both uh, sides of New York, the Mets and the Yankees. Uh, talk about both stadiums going out. What was your fondest memory in Shea and then fondest memory here at Yankee Stadium? Well, my fondest memory is always the postseason. You know, the New York baseball fan just seems to light up when there's a postseason game in any sport, really. And playing in the postseason with the Mets back in 1988 against the Dodgers, and even though we lost that series, those home games were, were such a thrill. Uh, how aggressive and upbeat the fans were. And then again in 96, or 95 rather, with the Yankees, I got a chance to see the Bronx and how they react to postseason play. And Donnie, Donnie Mattingly's first playoff game after all those years as a, as a Yankee, being able to play with him in that first game. And, and, and I can remember seeing the upper deck here at, at Yankee Stadium shaking. Mm -hmm. There was so much excitement. Fans were jumping up and down. And it, it was quite a thrill to see postseason play in New York. Adversity. Everyone has some sort of adversity. Did you have any adversity that you were going up with a child or even in baseball? Well, injuries. Injuries are a big part when, when you when you make your living, you know, physically uh, as a pitcher. You're so worried about your arm and your shoulder. You know, I, I had my share of injuries. And, uh, to and me, I had my aneurysm. That was probably the scariest part. Was, uh, the unknown of, of not knowing it. I didn't know what the word aneurysm meant when I, when I was diagnosed with an aneurysm. And, you know, now I can probably give you a medical dissertation on it if <laughs> okay. you know, haven't gone through it. But there's some scary things when you're an athlete and physically you have a problem and your livelihood is challenged. That's probably the, the scariest part. Leadership, you've always been a leader on the field and off the field. And what does leadership mean to you? I think leadership just means being a stand-up guy. You know, it's, it's about when it's, when it's good or it's bad, especially when it's bad. You know, if you're struggling or the team's losing or you're not playing well or performing up to expectations, that, that you're still in front of your locker. You're still upbeat. <laughs> and you still try to send a message to your team, your teammates, that, that you're not going to get down. You're going to keep fighting. Who's your mentor? Well, yeah, actually, you know, I grew up uh, in Kansas City as a Royals fan, so I got a chance to be around great players, guys like George Brett and Hal McRae and some of the Royals teams that battled the Yankees back in the 70s. And those guys, you know, the late, great uh, Dan Quisenberry, who was a great relief pitcher for the Royals, who passed away uh, in his 40s, way too young, was, was a really good influence on me early in my career. And I'll never forget those guys. How about young students? What advice would you give them today with all the steroid talk and everything that's going on in baseball and, and in life in general? What would you tell them? Well, I think, you know, I, I believe baseball's on the right track. You know, I think the young kids are getting educated much better than we were coming up through. Uh, I, th I think the young kids in the game now, the Jabba Chamberlains, uh, guys like that, the Yankees are, are good, solid kids. Uh, the only advice I'd give to them would be to enjoy it, have fun, uh, watch what you do both on the field and off the field, and, and make sure that you can be proud. Be proud of your stats and be proud of your accomplishments and, and represent your organization well. I'd have to ask you about July 18, 1999, Yogi Berry Day. Uh, go through that for me a little bit, and then rain during the game. Yeah, it was it was a remarkable day. I remember warming up before the game and watching Yogi Berra ride around in a convertible Thunderbird around the warning track, all the way around the field. And how 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 much the fans loved him, and how what a great day that was for him after all those years of being away from the Yankees to finally be welcomed back into the organization, right where he belonged. And so it was a tremendous start to my day. I remember being so happy, go lucky, warming up and being so happy and thrilled for Yogi. And, it was just a sense of kind of a like you're a little kid back in the backyard again, and that this is this is the way baseball's yeah, supposed to be. Hey. Talk about 
talking about baseball, you know, you go. The changes that have been made in baseball since you started, since you started doing the minor leagues and what has happened to the years and what changes you see in the future. Well, what, I, what I've seen is it used to be back in the late 70s, early 80s, and now through the that the baseball people really ran the game. The lifetime baseball talent evaluators were the guys that, that really were in were in the decision-making positions, whereas nowadays there's so much more information, obviously with the internet, and stats, and, and number-crunching type individuals now that, that, that tend, tend to be in more power positions in baseball, and tend to be in the, the, the decision-making positions. A lot of the organizations are run by committee now, where you have lawyers and accountants and also talent evaluators that all collaborate on decision making, whereas in the past it used to be more about talent evaluation. David, thank you very much for coming every time. I really appreciate it. And, uh, My pleasure. It's a pleasure being with you. Thank you.